If you are in a time of testing and trial in your life, God will use the heat of the fire to refine you. Return to doing the things you did when you first encountered Jesus. Do the things you did first. Revelations 2 and 5, NLT, Revelations 2 and 5. And it reads, look how far you have fallen. Turn back to me and do the works you did at first. If you don't repent, I will come and remove your lampstand mm -hmm. from its place among the churches. Yes, the Lord, may I never lose my first love for you. Help me to remember the height for which I have fallen and return to you. Thank you for the inspiring courage of the persecuted church. In the face of the great trials that they went through. Help me to hold to your truth despite our culture. Keep me faithful to you. What are the signs of leaving my first love for God? Evidence of leaving your first love for the Lord. Warning signs to heed. Warning signs to heed. 
every believer should be aware of the danger of leaving his first love for the Lord. Long ago, the church in Ephesus was busy doing many things for God. Yet Jesus said, I have somewhat against thee because thou have left thy first love. So the Lord commanded them. He said, remember, remember therefore from which thou art falling and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place. Except thou repent. Repentance is very important while you serve it. Amen. Several things can indicate that you are wandering from your first love. One, you delight in someone else more than you delight in the Lord. I'll say that again. You delight in someone else more than you delight in the Lord. What do you mean, preacher? Your love for God should be foremost in your heart. Exceeding the bond of any other relationship. Jesus identified the greatest of all commandments. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength this is the first commandment. Two, your soul does not have a desire to fellowship in God's word or prayer. I'll say it again. Your soul does not have a desire to fellowship in God's word or prayer. When your mind, will, and emotions wander from devotion to God, watch out. Your relationship with God deepens as you spend time in his word and commune with him in prayer. If you forsake this fellowship, your understanding of your true condition before God will grow dull. As God's children, his friends, and his bride, it is critical that we draw near to him to engage in our relationship with him. James 4 Verse 7 and 8, NLT evangelism. James 4, 7 and 8, NLT. Uh -huh. so, so humble yourselves before God. Humble yourself. You can't step to God acting all crazy. Amen. Complaining and fussing at God. He said, humble yourself. Hush. Bow down to God. Humble yourself before God. Uh-huh. Resist the devil. You have to resist him. Talking about the devil. And he will what? He will flee from you. He will flee from you. You got no business running from him. Amen. He will flee from you if you resist him. Uh-huh. Come close to God. Come close to God. That's what we were doing earlier. Amen. Oh, and I was just blessing God. Getting closer to him, getting closer to him, blessing him. And he started doing stuff on the inside. Yeah. Worship is never out of order. Yeah. You can't turn it on, you can't turn it off. Yeah. 
Because worship is when we worship God. So come close to God and... And God will come close to you. Come close to you. Uh-huh. Wash your hands, you sinners. You who? Sinners. You sinners. Uh-huh. Purify your hearts. Your hearts. Purify it. Clean it up. For? For your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Your loyalty wow. is divided between God and the world. You got to make up your mind that you're going to give God total loyalty. You can't give him half of, of, of um, loyalty and then give Satan half of it. It don't work like that. You cannot love two people at the same time. I agree with you. I know you can't. You're going to love one and you're really going to hate the other. Because you don't talk about love, you tell them I lack them. You really hate them. Amen. Hello. So, number three, point number three. Your thoughts in leisure moments do not honor the Lord. Your thoughts, your thought pattern. Your thoughts in leisure moments, when you got leisure moments, do not honor the Lord. He said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy mind. The things that captivate your thoughts and leisure moments reveal, reveal much about the priorities of your heart. The Apostle Paul instructed us in Philippians 4 and 8, King James Version. Whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are true. Uh huh. Whatsoever things are honest. Uh huh. Whatsoever things are just. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever things are pure. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever things are lovely. Are lovely. Uh huh. Whatsoever things are of good report. Of good report. But if there be any virtue. Uh huh. And if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. That's where we have to have our mindset. Hello, somebody. What sort of thing is honest? What sort of things are lovely? What sort of things are pure? What sort of things are of a good report? Think on these things. He said, if there be any praise, if there be any praise, he said, think on these things. Number four, you make excuses to do things that displeases the Lord. Claiming to be only human. I'm only human. And I had to feed my flesh. I'll say that again. You make excuses to do things that displeases the Lord. Claiming to be only human. God wants you to dedicate your life to him as a living sacrifice. Discerning his will in all things, and walking in obedience to him. As your good shepherd, he will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah. There is no excuse on, for disobeying the Lord. Yeah. His grace is sufficient yes, to rescue you from every temptation that comes in your life. The truth is temptation cannot take you. Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 13, NLT, Evangelist. The temptations in your life uh -huh. are no different from what others experience. Others experience the same thing you do. The same way you believe others don't believe like you. But the temptations in your life are no different from what other people experience. So in other words, when we have them, we don't go get a 40. We don't get a, a hit of this. Or we don't smoke this or drink that. No, no, no. We're going to praise. We're going to worship. And read the scripture and stand on it. Right. 
Because something can happen. I just told you the truth is temptation cannot take you. It only take you if you allow it to. And God. And God is faithful. Uh huh. He will not allow the temptation. To be more than you can stand. He said, what you going through? He said, if you can't stand it, I'll move it. Amen. But if you can deal with it, he said, so be it. Right. Hello, somebody. Uh-huh. When you are tempted, what? he will show you a way out so that you can endure. He said, I'm going to show you a way out so that you can endure. Going through. He still wants you to go through. Yep. James 1. 14 through 16. King James Version. Mm -hmm. Temptation comes from our yeah, own desires. That's fast. I like that. That's fast. <laughs> King James Version. Go ahead. Temptation comes from our own desires. From our own desires. And you have many desires. And you didn't even realize it. But you got a lot of desires. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. And it says, which what? Which entice us and drag us away. It drags us away. It takes us away from God. These, These desires give birth to sinful actions. To sinful action. To sinful actions. And? And when sin is allowed to grow, mm -hmm. it gives birth to death. It gives birth to death. Isn't it amazing? Death is already in us. You obey God, he said, I'll bless you. And I'll keep you. When it's time for you to go, he'll bring, he'll come get you. But if not, you got purpose. You got work to do. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. So don't be trying to leave your first love. Amen. Read. So don't be misled. Uh-huh. My dear brothers mm -hmm. and sisters, mm -hmm. every man is tempted. When he is drawn away of his own lust of and his entice. own lust and entice. Your obedience to God demonstrates your love for him. Wow. Your obedience to God yeah. demonstrates your love for him. Jesus said, number five, you do not willingly and cheerfully give to God's work or to the needs of others. I'll say that again. You do not willingly and cheerfully give to God's work or to the needs of others. The work that must be going on in the church. Yeah. Your money take care of the bills, it takes care of the rent, it takes care of all of that. And it also says, or to the needs of others. You're going to always have needy people in the church. Amen. Our job is to show them what the word of God says. They plant the seed and they start to grow in off the word and they start prospering. Amen. I love somebody. Amen. So generosity is part of God's holy character. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave up something. And he loves a cheerful giver. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? As believers... We are to love mm -hmm. and give. Amen. Even to our enemies. Amen. We can do this only, only, only by the grace of God. As he renews our minds and teaches us to walk in obedience to his voice. Number six. You cease to treat others as you would treat the Lord. You cease to treat others as you would treat the Lord. Jesus said in St. John, the 13th chapter, and verse 34, King James Version Evangelist. 
A new commandment I give unto you. Mm -hmm. That you love one another. That you love one and another. As I Don't look at one another and start thinking negative. Amen. Love is an action word. Can I get a witness? Amen. Because the same predicament they are in, either you was in it or you're going to go in it. Amen. Love is powerful. Yes, sir. Uh huh. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Uh huh. So, love one another is not a suggestion. Mm -hmm. It is a command. That's right. That we are enabled to fulfill by the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. We need that. No, no, you, you, you can't function without the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. You're going to be a religious nut or educated nut, but you need the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit sizes up everything. He sizes you up too. Amen. Yes, it do. Do you find that you are quick to judge and condemn others? Mm. Wow. Then consider God's love for you. And his command that you love others with love. Number seven. You view Christ's commandment as restrictions to your happiness rather than expressions of his love. I'll say that again. You view Christ's commands as restrictions. You think it's restricted because God gave you his commandments to your happiness rather than express of his love. God's commandments, the word of your wise and caring father leads you towards what is good and away from what is evil. John 14 and 21, man, in this King James Version. Mm -hmm. He that hath my commandments mm -hmm. and keepeth them. And keepeth them. A lot of people have them, but they ain't keeping them. Uh-huh. He it is that loves me. He it is that loves me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. Mm -hmm. And I will love him and will manifest myself. To him. I'm going to manifest myself to him. You're going to, you, you're going to get large uh -huh. in the spirit. Yeah. Hello, somebody. <laughs> Obedience to his commandments brings the true freedom of joy. Yeah. I'll say that again. Obedience yeah. to his commandments brings true freedom and joy. Number eight, you strive for affirmation from the world rather than approval from the Lord. You strive for affirmation from the world rather than approval from God. You want the world, the world let me tell you something. The world don't care about you seeking God. Amen. They don't care how blessed you are. They just want what you got. And their job is to take you away from God. Amen. Jesus faced, faced misunderstandings and rejection because of his obedience to God. And you will face similar situations. Just be faithful to God. The enemy is going to rise up like dangerous. When you're obedient to God, you, you, you hanging out with the gang. Mm -hmm. And the gang is really have pulled you away. Mm -hmm. If you were of the world, the world will love you because you belong to them. Mm -hmm. But because you are not of the world, and I have chosen you, chosen you out of the world, this is why the world hates you. Amen. First John 2, 15 to 17. 
Love not the world, mm -hmm. neither the things that are in the world. Mm -hmm. If any man love the world, uh -huh. the love of the Father is not the in him. The love of the Father, the love of the Father is not in him. Uh huh. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, uh -huh. and the lust of the eye, uh -huh. and the pride of life, mm -hmm. is not of the Father. It's not of the Father. It's not of the Father. Uh huh. But it's of the world. It's of the world. And the world passes away. Mm -hmm. And the lust thereof. Mm -hmm. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Abideth forever. That's why he gave us eternal life. Amen. Either you can spend it with God or you spend it with the devil. Amen. But you got to make up your mind where you want to spend your time. Can I get a witness somebody? Amen. So, number nine. You fail to make Christ or his words known because you fear rejection. You fail to make Christ or his words known because you fear rejection. If your faithfulness to God depends on the reaction of those around you, you are serving men mm -hmm. instead of serving God. Mm -hmm. If your faithfulness to God depends on the reaction of those around you, you are serving men mm -hmm. instead of serving God. Jesus' obedience to God agitated many people. Just his obedience, including the religious leaders of his community. It was the religious leaders that killed him. They talked about God, but they, they didn't want to accept Jesus as the son of God. Be faithful to proclaim the truth in love. Do the truth in love. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6, King James. Let your conversation be without covetousness. To be without covetousness. Uh huh. And be content with such things as you have. Be content with the thing. God has blessed you. He's going to elevate you. Yes. Sir. Stop trying to elevate yourself. Let God do it. Amen. That's why I say humble yourself in the presence of God. Uh huh. For He has said, "I will never leave thee nor forsake." Thee. I'm not going to leave you. It may seem like I'm distant, but I'm really in you. Yeah. I'm waiting for your mouth, which is the boss, to start speaking and calling my, calling my name. Amen. I will answer you. And God is true to his word. Yes, sir. Yes, he is. Look like he didn't call him and call him. Look, he ain't answered because he already told you before you even called him. Amen. That's the time you got to let the Holy Spirit to bring back memories of what you asked God for. Amen. So, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. The who? The, the Lord. Lord is what? Is my helper. Is my helper. The Lord is. Yes, he is. Because I'm going to tell you something. When you're looking for help, people get scattered. Amen. People disappear. Right. Amen. But the Lord is my helper. Is my helper. And, and I will not fear what man shall do. I'm, I'm not going to fear what man say or Amen. do. Amen. Because the Lord is my helper. Amen. That's why it's important. You got to pray in everything. Everything you go through, you got to pray. Amen. Stop being so relaxed that you can't pray. Amen. Or you go to sleep and you go you go you go to pray, but you wind up going to sleep. I said you go to pray, but you wind up going to sleep. I said you go to pray, but you wind up going to sleep. Amen. You sleep what? You wasn't tired a while ago. That's true. You took vitamins, you didn't you and drunk some coffee, you did all that up. But soon as I'm gonna talk to the Lord now, okay. Don't lay in the bed, pray. Because you know you're going to go to sleep. The body starts getting relaxed. Well, I came on my knees there. Well, get up in the chair. 
And you, and you gotta be careful about the kid, be so comfortable that you go see your mouth low and you start sliding. You're supposed to be praying. You're supposed to be talking to God, communicating with God. You can't pray and watch television. Or leave the radio. Or have three conversations going on. Ain't no way in the world. I know where you fasting and eating hoggies. Ain't no way. The Bible says, sanctify yourself. You're going to have to leave everybody. Yes, sir. I said, you're going to have to leave everybody. Amen. And let God do his best in you. Hallelujah. I said, let God do his best in you. The Lord is my helper. Yes, he is. Realize it. Make that your priority that I can depend on God. You didn't ask everybody else. Hello. Amen. But when you turn to God, he promised to bless you. Yes. He promised to heal you. Amen. He promised to deliver you. Hallelujah. He promised to make your way prosperous. Thank you. And that's the word of the Lord. See, we forget the scriptures when we go through what we go through. Yes. That's why a lot of times you got to rebuke yourself. Yes. And pick up the pieces and be like Humpty Dumpty. Lord, here's my life. Put it back together again. Because it's a Humpty Dumpty uh, soldier man could not put it back together again. But God can. God can fix you. I said he can fix you. Number 10. You become complacent towards sinful conditions around you. You complain about all the sin around you. But you don't complain about the sin that's in you. Amen. Jesus warned that because iniquity abide or strives, we love the love of many shall increase in coldness. Some folk be cold so cold you get chilly when you're around them. Amen. They, they, they be cold. Yeah. They cold. They don't smile or grin. You look at them. You look at them. The eyes is black ice. They this. They, 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 they chill it. Their spirit is cold. Mm -hmm. Nicolty abides. Mm -hmm. Witnessing the sinfulness of the world around you should motivate you to follow God with even a greater determination. Mm -hmm. All what you see around you, you see a doomed world. Yes. Yes. Folk getting killing, I mean killing sprees. Young brother just going crazy. Running from county to county, just killing. Turn around, kill his mama, kill his sister, turn around and then go kill his girlfriend. Just killing. What's wrong with the mind? The devil played tricks on the mind. Even some of these, these, these shows and these games they be playing yes, take their mind to another dilemma. Yes, it does. They think it's cool when you shoot somebody. You deal with death. You don't want to do no time. So you think they ain't gonna catch you. And that's where the devil get their minds. They go up there and kill all them folks and you walk away, anybody gonna get you. They got their minds just like that. And you look at that, you look at the White House, really it becomes an outhouse because the old president is forcing that the new president. They say he's too old. I mean, they're going back and forth. Republicans and the Democrats. Pharisees. Don't you see? Don't you see? So these are the times that we're living in. But it ought to make you want to serve God more. Stay close to him. Because you don't know when death knock on that door. And you want to be right when death knock on that door. Mark the fourth chapter, verses 18 and 19, King James Version. Mark the fourth chapter, 18 and 19 Version. Okay. And these are they which are sown among thorns, mm -hmm. such as hear the word. They hear the word. Uh-huh. And the cares of this world, mm -hmm. the deceitfulness of riches. And the what? And the lust of other things. What? Entering in. And it choked the world. Choked the word. It choked the world and it become unfruitful. In other words, 
He said, these are they which are sown among thorns, such as they hear the word. Folk come hear the word. And they're not careful because see one thing about the word. When you hear the word, that word sounds good to you. You write it down. Then you got, you're supposed to go home and go back in that word and let God talk to you. Because he wanna tell you some things, he's gonna show you things. All I'm doing is giving you an introduction. Amen. Your job is to go in and let God work it. And he will work it. Amen. He says, such as they hear the word. But he said, and the cares of this world and the deceitful of riches. Everybody wanna be rich. They do anything to get rich. They don't care. Them people playing more numbers and God got liver pills. I'm going to hit. That's it in my, I'm going to hit. I'm going to hit. They didn't spend about almost a million dollars playing them. It's in that spirit. I mean, I got to play. I got to play. I got to play. That's a lot of money coming out of your pocket. Hello. And you wake up lucky. And you feel lucky. No, you either curse or you're blessed. Can I get a witness? Well, you know, my mama came to me last night. I said, what she said? She gave me a plate triple seven. She told me to play, told me to box them. He did all right talking to you. That wasn't your mama. That was a devil. Amen. He may act and talk like your mama, but that wasn't, huh? Because in the grave, you didn't lose memory. You lose everything. They ain't coming back. Then Jesus come. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. But I got to play it. You running them horses. The horses running you. Amen. Taking your money. Huh. Hello. It is a billion dollar organization what they're doing. Think about it. Yeah. Don't tell me the devil ain't never talked to some of y'all in. Amen. Play that number, girl. Amen. Go ahead, brother. Play that number. <laughs> box it, too. Go ahead, box it. And people, and then there's a people that do play, they come and say, Yeah, I had a dream last night. You did? Yeah. I dreamed about triple. Triple what? Triple two. Two, three, and one. I got to play. Well, girl, you better you know that I know. You better box it. Let me tell you something. They playing. Look, numbers ain't just got it. Well, look at the money that they're making on. Can I get away with this? In the world, you ask yourself, what's the difference between a crackhead and one of them? They're taking food out the out the house. They both of them. One one is just ain't snorting up in his nose. The other one just gets giving. I'm giving money. That you know, I'm giving. That's the wrong generosity. Amen. But see, as being believers in Christ, we already prosper. Amen. When we accept Christ as Lord of our life, we prosper. Amen. You got to first prosper in spirit. Amen. So when you get to know Him. He's gonna show Himself to you. The Bible says He's gonna manifest Himself in you and around you. Folk gonna look at you and say, "Oh, you didn't got large." I ain't talking about in body, but I'm talking about money, spirit, spirit spiritually. Amen. You got law. In other words, you find yourself, you got workers. Amen. People are coming to you for employment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Do you look like, do you even think like that? Yes. If you're in God, you can think. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you. Hallelujah. And the lust of other things, other things, mm. other things. Enter in and it chokes the word. It chokes the word of God. And it becomes unfruitful. Amen. And that's bad for God. God don't, God don't like that. He gave you seed. Mm -hmm. Your job is to plant it. He didn't plant it in you. You got to plant it what? As you move along. Hello, somebody. Amen, Amen everybody. Amen. So, Number 11. I'm almost finished. I did that when I started. <laughs> Number 11. You refuse to give up any activity that you know is off offending a weaker brother. I'll say that again. You refuse to give up an activity that you know is offending a weaker brother. In every generation, believers seek God's will concerning description and activities. 
Romans 14. Verse 12 to 14 in King James Version. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Now you notice he said yes. He got a comma there. Because he ain't finished. Uh huh. Each of us will give a personal account to God. Every last one of ain't none of us going to get away. Amen. We have to give it a, you say personal, a personal account. account. Uh huh. So let's stop condemning each other. Mm, uh uh. Stop it. Amen. Stop condemning. You don't look down on your brother and sister unless you're going to pick them up. Amen. Because they down, something happened. Maybe they wasn't strong as you. Maybe they couldn't bear what was happening to them. But you got a little strength. Pick them up Amen. and strengthen them. Amen. Don't criticize them. I never liked them no way. Don't talk like that. Amen. That's not Christ in you. Amen. So, decide instead to live in such a way mm -hmm. that you will not cause another believer to stumble and fall. And that's what happened in the church. Book tearing one another down. They can't stand one another. One that lends some money, the other lends money, and they don't like them. But God wants to elevate both of you. Wow. Amen. But I can't come in there when you got all in your heart, she got all in her heart. I can't work like that. Amen. Got to move that. You got to move that. Amen. When you move that, then you will flourish in God. You will not cause another believer to stumble or fall. Yeah. So the, the decide instead to live in such a way that you will not cause a brother or sister to stumble and fall. 14. I know and am convinced on the authority mm -hmm. of the Lord Jesus. On the authority uh -huh. of the Lord Jesus mm -hmm. that no food in and of itself is wrong to eat. It's wrong to eat, uh-huh. But if someone believes it is wrong, then for that person, it, it is, is wrong. wrong. And I have people, you know, I don't eat this. I don't eat that. What do you eat? Don't worry about it. No. Don't condemn a person because they, they don't eat what you eat. I was doing the prison ministry. I thought they were working in the prison. It was going through the child. I was standing there talking to the brothers. And the brother came up. He said, the boy, <laughs> the boy put a pork chop on there. The boy said, don't you see my goofy? Don't you, you know, I don't eat that stuff. He said, look, brother, I don't know. A whole lot of brothers come up here and say they, they would, the, the nation of Islam, but they be tearing that pork up in them long to the do. He said, well, I ain't them. So the brother that was beside, he said, hey, brother, I don't need no harm. Can I have this pork chop then? <laughs> so that's what he said. I need that meat so I can be strong. Amen. I'm in a crazy place. Amen. So in other words, what, what, what Paul, Paul told Peter, hmm. everything God made is good. Amen. They was doing a work. They were doing that. And the Bible said they was in the house. They throw down. They seen that pig up there. He started going off. I don't eat no money. Everything God, but Paul said everything God made is good. He said, if you think something, in, pray over it. Yeah. Amen. I mean, you pray before you eat. Hey man, you run up them ch the Chinese, you always be getting them, um, uh, uh, you know what I'm telling you, you run up there, getting them cat paws, I mean, general, general ties, egg rolls, and, and all, y'all, you know the stuff you be eating, little stuff fries, y'all know you're going in, and you be so hungry, you don't, you decorate and go ready to eat, they never prayed of it. You don't know what you eat? You pray over it. Hello, somebody. I did, huh? We good to me. No, you pray over it. And now it's God. And what God see if there's something in there that's going to hurt you, or kill you, there's a lot of food poison going around. Yeah. People ain't cleaning and you do just or nothing. They're not cleaning nothing. They just be good because they're making fast money. What was saying, well, okay, let me say, you know, that uh, fish, fish relay, he said the place is always crowded. Chick-fil-A. Chick 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 Chick-fil-A. Yeah, Chick-fil-A. Always crowded. It's always crowded. You see lines and cars. You can't even get in the in the in the can't get it get around. So make up what what to cut in this food. He said they closed on Sunday. He said they Christian. He said, no, they got drugs and that's <laughs> Ain't no way to well be chicken like that. 
You hear me? Chicken going back, getting in the line, getting more chicken, more chicken. And boy said, man, this stuff is good. So of course they don't go for a week. He said, hey, I got to get me some chicken. So they did a thing. They were saying that what, what, what we were saying on, on the on the on broadcast. He was saying something ain't right with that chicken. And I did a search. They got some cocaine in it. I said, uh, there he go. There he go talking. I said they're gonna bring a lawsuit against him. But all I'm saying is that when you look at situations, circumstances like that, people are going. People are, they have a, a hunger spirit. I mean, it's as bad as hunger is greedy. And this what and they and they be tearing the place up. I be looking, and I say, but they respect God. They close it, so they prayed over them. They prayed over the the organization, and it is growing. Amen. It is growing, and that's what that's the whole thing about it. But when you look at it, always say, take time to cook something for yourself. Amen. Be careful when you're buying all these TV dinners too. You know, yeah, they've been frozen a long time. <laughs> Hello, somebody. <laughs> You know you're supposed to take five minutes in that thing, another five minutes. And then you put 25 minutes in that thing, you get that thing and start smoking. What is that woman in there? <laughs> oh, yeah, you check, you check what you got. Amen. Why do you think so many sickness and afflictions happen? What you eating? Processed food. Yes. I know I know you let them tell you cheese hungry, but you got to be careful with the process. Hello? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Amen. <laughs> you want to get you on me. All I'm saying is you have to be mindful. You got to pray over what you eat. Amen. Am I making sense? Yes, sir. Amen. And then on the back, they tell you how many calories and all that kind of stuff on it. Can I get it with it? Amen. One thing I say about nicotine, the same say it's a hazard to smoke me. And they just be going off because it's a hazard. <laughs> Everything that tells you, the folks just go crazy for it. Can I get a witness? Yeah. Now, 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 the note names don't have nothing on it. If you smoke them, you're going to find out. You start laughing and throw a little angel dust in there, and you start tripping. You're going to go, my God. That boy told me, say, man, you should have been with me. I said, you ain't been nowhere. He said, I've been on a trip, man. I said, where did you go? He said, man, I've been to the moon. I said, I watched you go all the way down to the ground. Didn't, didn't fall, you go over to the ground. But the cigarette burnt, because you know, the cigarette burnt, threw that down, pulled the pipe and got another one, and came back up and said, Whoo-wee. Boy, you should have been with me. You ain't went nowhere. Wow. His mind is gone. Yeah. And that's what drugs do. They're killing for every day. You hear me? They're killing for every day. Folk are scared to go down Kensington. They look at they look at Kensington. And say, no, what, what happened? They push, all do is push one side to the other of the other. One part of the city to the next part of the city. But see, but listen, you got to, you still got to pray. Amen. You got to pray, because you want to think about a junkie, they don't want no food. That's true. Crackhead to come in your house while you go. Put your robe on, make them a sandwich, and watch television. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Uh, take a nap. Do, do more, and, and, and use your bathroom. Uh-huh. Won't flesh the toilet. And you come in there and have to dash and say what you want. Mm. Well, I live here. No, I live here now. Wow. You got my robe on. And wow. these are the times we live in. Yes, you, you know, we look at stuff and we laugh and think it's funny. It ain't funny. No, it ain't funny. You don't know where death is, hunting Because it's always looking. You find the other day, woman walking up the drive, we got shot in the back. He shot, but I thought it was damn shooting guy, but he got shot in the back. Who, 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 nobody can't find nobody. Wow. He said, the woman's mind out of business, going up there, we go home, somebody shot in the back. So looking at the times now, we look at the, what's the, the four young boys? Yeah. We're going, we're, 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 we're crazy, ready? Right? Yeah. 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 Say, because they had a problem, an argument or something? Innocent people got shot. Mm-hmm. The devil always hunt down the innocent. Think about it. And the individual that's doing the crime, if they, he don't care, he ain't gonna live for. Them. But there's a lot to live for. They need Christ. Who's gonna tell them? Hallelujah. God needs somebody that's gonna talk to them to tell them. Anytime you get a young person attention, minister to them, that's talk right. to them, be nice. Amen. Don't act like they act. 
Because sometimes they, they get out and you can catch yourself. Your hands start to shake you. You may want to get you know, up and down, around and around. You might want to feel like kicking something. You can't do that. Amen. You come on to yourself. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about, too. You want to smack the taste out of their mouth. You can't be smacking them. Smack's a word. Amen. It's a word. Praise the Lord. Number 12. Amen. You are unwilling to forgive your offenders. Every last one of us in here has them. We all have enemies in here. Mm -hmm. Some of people say, I never want to see you again. I never want to talk to you again. I never want to be bothered with you. I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. Look, that's not. That's not that. What they did to you make you hate them. Mm -hmm. But you got to remember that spirit that's in them right. that made them do what they did Amen. to you because you were chosen. Amen. You were chosen to be blessed. The devil don't like you because you blessed like that. Amen. He can't stand. If a man says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has not seen? A spirit of forgiveness is intentional to the believer. Jesus said, if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father who is in heaven will forgive your sins. And it's bad to judge other folk when you in sin. Hello, somebody. And if you're not in sin, you don't judge, you pray for them. That they come out of it. People are hurting for real. And that's why you got to be careful how you talk to them. Yep. Well, they might get on your nerve. Well, the reason why you you get on their nerve because you're a breakthrough. Mm. You're breaking up stuff that's in them, but you do it in prayer. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Yeah. So, return to your first love for the Lord. Mm. The longing of our hearts should be to be with God and to know him intimately. See, we can get intimate in other things. Mm -hmm. Because he get, if you get intimate really with God, you ain't got time for nothing else. Amen. Hello. Amen. This is the reason for knowing his ways and his will. So, to know him, and this is God's promise to his children. Jeremiah 29 and 13, King James Version. Mm -hmm. You shall seek me mm -hmm. and find me. He said, you're going to seek me. He's you know already telling you. You're going to seek me. Isn't it amazing how we can seek other things? Look at the things you used to seek before. You saw a lot of stuff. Hello. Amen. And you found it. He said, you shall seek me and find me. He said, when you're looking for me, you're going to find me. It's bad if you find you can't find. Mm -hmm. Can I get a witness? Amen. When? When you shall search for me with all your heart. With all your heart. I need your heart. Amen. Search me with all your heart. Yeah. Don't give up. Just continue to search me. And you search him through the scriptures. Amen. You go into the word of God. And you go into the word of God and, and, and it makes a plateau for you. And you say, God, I'm trusting you. I believe you because I'm going to look. I'm not going to stop seeking you. Amen. Do you not know when you stop seeking God, all kind of stuff gets in? Amen. All stuff can get involved. Uh-huh. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. Well, so if you seek me, he say, and search for me, he say, you're going to be found. I'm going to find you. I'm going to find you. In other words, you're going to come to the understanding. And the knowledge and wisdom of who he is. Once you know that, you hit it for eternity and the purpose that he's given you. When God is about to give his people the expected good, he pours out a spirit of prayer. Have you noticed some of you may have been praying more than you were praying before? Well, he's getting ready to pour out. He can be poor, well, expecting good. In other words, you've been expecting it, it's coming. Amen. 
is coming. Hallelujah. So don't give up now. Right, right. See, 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 the Holy Spirit really ushers you in yes. to a spirit of prayer. Amen. He said, well, I meet the Lord at lunch. I meet him at breakfast. I meet him at, at evening. I meet all night. That's a good thing. But when you go into the God, now you didn't told him, you know, you didn't told him breakfast, you didn't told him about everything, come back noon, you tell him everything, and then you come back dinner, you didn't told him again. And now twelve midnight, you lay down and the spirit of God will wake you up. See, I'm gonna manifest myself to you. He talks like that. He wanna see how hungry you is. How desperate do you want him? He said you gotta get your priorities in order. But well, a lot of times we don't do that. He, when he say fast, he means fast. Amen. He cleaning your body out. Amen. He's separating you from some things. Mm -hmm. When you all full up with a bunch of junk, no, no, no. That's when you separate yourself. He say separate yourself and consecrate yourself. He said because I want to spend time with you. I want to hold you and woo you. That's what I want to do for you. I want to hold you and woo you. I want you to know you're a winner. And what we do a lot of times and saying, God, I, I've never been to this level before. He said, it's a good thing. Because I'm going to take you further. Amen. I suppose you continue to believe me. Amen. And trust me. He said, feed yourself. He said, feed. You got to eat. You got to eat. You got to feed on the word of God. Amen. Put your spiritual music on. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. I was coming out today and, and, and my son was saying, hey, Dad. Listen to the whiners, right? Listen to the whiners. And I said, yeah, I, I know. I said, one thing about songs. Of gospel. Ain't no oldies. They sound like they were yes. just new. Amen. You listen to the words of them. And he says, he said, I was raised on this. I said, yeah, I know. I had you with me. <laughs> Working out, <laughs> going to church. We're doing all that. That's all they was hearing. Come home and hear the same thing. Amen. So what? Good in the spirit. Amen. Am I making sense? Amen. And that's why it's important that when you spend time doing what God wants you to do. Ain't no time wasted. Amen. Ain't no time wasted. Can I get a witness? Amen. So, he pours out a spirit of prayer when you, when you, when you seek him. You're expecting good. Can I get a witness? Yes. You're tired of expecting bad. <laughs> Come on, talk to me. Amen. You're tired of Amen. It starts to change your way of thinking. I'm going to expect good. And so he said that when you when you do that, he's going to pour out the spirit of prayer. And when you get the spirit of prayer, and you'll tell yourself, you gonna find your way, find you in a room somewhere. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it'll breakfast when you the breakfast when it's time to eat, but you fasting and you laying up. It's it's evening time. Amen. I've been this long. God is working in you. Hallelujah. You didn't get out. Now He want to give in you. He'll Hallelujah. flip you over, turn you upside yes. down. Hello. You come out there looking like a fly. You, you didn't <laughs> cry and weak all down, yeah. looking like all oh, Yes, I'm talking yeah. to you. God yeah. operates on you. Yeah. He's working on you. Hallelujah. You go to the doctor, the doctor says, I can't find nothing wrong with you. Hallelujah. I say, Why am yeah. I here? Because you gave me an appointment. Glory, glory. <laughs> Hello, somebody. So we got to thank God. Thank you, Jesus. He's a healer. I know yes. what Buddy said. He's a healer. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Do you not know I was critical? Yeah. Oh, I was critical, people of God. But God said, not so. Amen. I said, well, I got to go down this road. He said, because you preach. Yeah. You preach it, I got to take you down this road. So you can feel what they feel. God, I don't want that what they feel. He said, you preach it. The only way you preach it because my anointing was in your life. Now you're feeling it. Amen. Oh, God. I said, God, thank you. I said, raise me up. Yeah. <laughs> he said, in my time, I'm manifesting myself in you. Through this, God, yes, I manifest myself. I'm going to manifest myself in you. And the scripture is right. So this is why. This is why. Stop getting upset when you're going through what you're going through. The, James said, have some joy in it. Yeah. <laughs> Go have some joy in this. Zombies around me. How you have joy? I got joy. When I think about the goodness of God, I got joy. Hello, somebody. So, uh, when you see the expected end approaching, then you shall call upon me. Promises are given to quicken and encourage prayer. I'll say that again. 
promises are given to quicken and encourage your prayer. It makes you pray more you're talking to God. Yeah. You can't out talk God. <laughs> Can I get with it? Amen. You might your vocal cords might get out. God be a good and then you get the moaning and yeah. crying out. Holy Ghost just takes over. Something on God help me. Mm. And as you moan and groan, God, Holy Spirit speak to you, say, I have already delivered you. He said, because you more you suffer. Ah, uh, you show me what you made of. Lord. Yeah. See, oh, okay. we look at things the wrong way. Yeah. Amen. We think we've been cursed. Yeah. That's what God knows when you don't know. Amen. So, and when deliverance is coming, we must, by prayer, go forth to meet it. You hear me? That's why it's important to come to church. Amen. You don't know where your full deliverance is at. Yeah. Hello, somebody. You got to hear the word of God. Well, I hear it on the radio. I got some tape. Yeah, but it's not, you got to be in a real service, yeah. a live service. Am I, am, 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 hello, somebody. Amen. A live service. And it does something to your spirit. Amen. Repent and clean up your act. If you have slipped into complacency, in other words, always complaining or compromise, you may need to get rid of the dross. Wow. It's there. As we read in Zechariah. I will refine them like silver, test them like gold. Mm. They will call on my name and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people and they will say, the Lord is our God. Yes. So, if you are in a time of testing and trial in your life, God will use the heat of the fire to refine you. Thank you Lord. Return to doing the things you did when you first encountered Jesus. If your love for God has grown cold, take steps to renew your relationship with him. Return to your first love. He is waiting for you with open arms. In my conclusion, repent and clean up your act. And if you have slipped into complacency or compromise, you may need to get rid of that junk. Hello, somebody. I hope that this message has helped you. Stay strong in the Lord and grow strong in the Lord. And let God manifest himself in you. Hello, somebody. Amen. I want to pray why. Wow. Right now, before I close, I just want to pray. As you sit right there, I want to pray. If you, you need that special prayer, you know, but we'll bless you. I think we had. Father, look upon your people. Strengthen them and encourage their hearts, God. Let them know this is not the end. And all that they're going through, God, let them know it's victory in the name of Jesus. That you chose them, they did not choose themselves. You knew, God, before they were even born, what they would be today. And right now, God, some of them hearts are heavy, some are hurt, some are crushed. But God, restore the years that the cricket word have eaten in the caterpillars in the name of Jesus. Love them and continue to love them in this loveless world. Let them know that you are their help in the name of Jesus. And we bless you for your name's sake. Stir up God. Stir up in them the gifts that they may understand that they are special to you. In times like this, heal the sick that the enemy had plagued, the afflicted he had plagued, 
We bind it up in the name of Jesus. And we trust you for your love. Trust you for your kindness. For you have never betrayed us. And we thank you in the name of Jesus. We give you our hearts. Change our minds. That we can depend on you in times like this. For we do really need a Savior. And you are our Savior. And we love you. You are Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end of our life. But God, I ask you to change the hearts and the minds of the people. Bring them back. Break the coldness up. Let them seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto them in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for being a giver. For you have given us your son. And your son has given his life. And his life has set us free. Thank you for the freedom in the spirit. In the name of Jesus. Look upon this world. You see those that are hurting, can you see, can't blind. But God, we ask that you loose. Loose up the wondering mind and the scattering thoughts. Bring them to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. For your name's sake, God, in the name of Jesus. Look upon the sick and afflicted. They can't walk, can't get around. Heal, God, in the name of Jesus. Yet you are still performing miracles in times like this. And we thank you. Bless every home that's represented here today. Let something new happen in the home, God. Let prosperity reign in the name of Jesus. Change their hearts and their minds that they may be closer to you in times like this. And we'll bless you. And we'll give you praise. And the people of God said,